info shop. It's gonna be a really good time. Hop in, come on. We got everything we need in here. Oh, as always, we have room to spare. <laughs> Buzzer door, we gotta go. Head to the archery shop. We'll see you guys there. So, let's go. Cruise. Then, usually, when that starts to happen, the uh, cruise just completely shuts off. So, they gotta turn the car off and then start it back up. <laughs> What's up guys? We're here at Whitetail Outdoors today at the bow shop, getting tuned in, getting ready to go before we uh, take off for our little deer tour here in the next couple weeks. And I just wanna kinda walk you through my bow setup real quick. A lot of you have been asking us questions recently about which bows we shoot, accessories, what our setups look like, yada yada. And we all have slightly different setups as we'll show you today and tomorrow when we're out shooting these things. But I'll just kinda go through mine real quick. I shoot an Alpha Max 35 from Hoyt had this bow how many years now since 2011 and I've hunted with just this killed an elk with it and uh, managed to get a few deer along the way as well and a couple of turkeys I like it a lot I haven't switched just because I found something that worked a few years ago and like shooting it and it fits me perfectly I like a longer bow as you can tell I got kind of a wingspan here and uh, I'm a little bit taller person so a longer bow fits me real nice as far as the balance goes. I took the grip off of this a few years ago. It came with a rubber grip that I didn't like very much. And uh, I like just shooting off the riser. That explains why that thing's gone. I am switching up my accessories this year to Trophy Ridge stuff and I really like their whisker biscuit. I actually used to shoot this a bunch many years ago and uh, had very good success with it. And I'm gonna switch back to it this year just because I'm kind of a, I don't know what you would call it. Keep it, it. simple. Yeah. Keep it simple, stupid guy, I guess. So I uh, like the whisker biscuit a lot, especially if you're ground hunting or if you're in a tree stand at a funky angle or something. It's gonna keep your arrow, you know, encased the entire time. And it's also really, really quiet. It's just a good all around hunting rest, I think, especially for whitetails. And if you're somebody like me that doesn't take very many shots over 30 yards, it's uh, really a perfect fit for my style of bow hunting. If you're on the ground, and you had to come to full draw you know, from the side or you had to maneuver around something, this is gonna keep your arrow in the rest. That's one thing that's constantly worrying me when I'm hunting off the ground is when I'm moving from side to side, my arrow will hit a piece of grass or a stick or something and get knocked off the rest and hit the riser and make a noise. That's not gonna happen with the whisker biscuit rest. Tad just got me fixed up and reserved my string so I don't have to deal with my dental floss issue anymore. So uh, we're ready to go, ready to go to Kentucky here next week. My kid, Warbs are laughing at me, but I'm telling you guys right now, that's a rare sighting. Oh, Frito, check him out. Local celebrity. <laughs> Look at that old dog there. You could possibly shoot a 30. Okay. I just got my new Barracuda and we got it fixed up here today. It's a pretty sweet bow. It's really similar to the old Halon I shot, but this bow is a lot faster and a lot more dead in my hand. You close your eyes, settle into your anchor good, and then open your eyes and you shouldn't have to raise or lower your head to see through the peak. If you do, I need to move it. It's a little high. A little high? Yeah. This is only my second bow that I've had. I, first I had a Mission Craze, which I got for Christmas. I don't know, three or four years ago. <laughs> Shot a doe and little buck with that. I wanted to work up the ladder a little bit, and so I decided to go with uh, the Hoyt Power Max. And uh, so far, I've been shooting real smooth compared to other bows that I've shot. This is definitely the most high-end bow that I've shot so far, so. Shooting good for you. Man, it's shooting good, it's shooting real good. Smooth. It's smooth, that's all I heard him say. Kind of like this little guy's face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This mustache is sweet because I can I can uh, anchor right at the corner of my mustache hairs. So if you can grow a mustache, do you or Zach ever worry about it like getting caught in the string or anything? Why do you think it's up? Oh, 
Well, guys, we're done here in the archery shop for today. I think everybody's got their bow set up. Logan and Ted are good to go over here, right? Yeah. I want to mention how important these archery shops are. We get a lot of you commenting on these videos that are new to bow hunting or mm -hmm. have only been at it for a couple years. So take advantage of your local archery shops. Like I said earlier, we're here at Whitetail Outdoors in Agency, Iowa. And you have and, people from all around come here to get bows set up. He said, yeah. he said he had a guy from Missouri come three hours away just to get his bow down here. So. I'll post a link down in the description below to Tad's shop if anybody uh, lives close by or wants to travel over here and check them out. You should. Uh, it's a pretty cool shop. But we're going to head out now. I'm probably going to go home and continue to shoot my bow because Me too. we're going to shoot. And it might be a little competition tomorrow. And the only oh, person yeah. I'm trying to beat is this guy. So. Well, it's going to be real tough. <laughs> <laughs> See that big black mark on there? That's for me. Yeah, Jake just decided to ram into the whole building. <laughs> Real smart. I'm a liability out here. You're just gonna want to go around. You're gonna. We're just sorry. Go, just go around. We're really it's sorry. Fine. It's fine. We're terrible. It's, it's fine. We're awful. <laughs> that looks like an accident waiting to happen. I've hit that before too. Have you? Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're not kidding, are you? <laughs> Number seven. That's the way to go. Don't get any of that in your mustache hairs, Ted. <laughs> Stuff you gotta learn, huh? Just gotta learn how to eat. What's your mother think of that awful thing? Don't say much. It's a Wednesday, guys, and we're going to shoot some uh, shoot some targets and stuff. Jake's gonna film me talk while he drives. And you're gonna put your buckle on so that stops dinging. Sorry. We're in a bit of a rush today. I'm trying to get out here and get to shooting. We got less than a week and we're gonna be leaving. And uh, right now I don't think Greg has a bow that works correctly. His bow is currently out of time. It needs... Uh, so are we. <laughs> and so are we. He needs to get a new string on his bow in the next three or four days or he's probably gonna be using the stick bow when he goes to Nebraska. Challenge number one has uh, arisen before the deer tour even started. Things are looking up. We're at the archery range. Is this it? I've never been here. Yeah, this is it. Looks pretty sweet. Well, we were showing you all these slow motion shots with our fancy cameras, but actually your iPhone, even if your screen's cracked, as long as your camera works, if it's a newer iPhone, you can film 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second, which is super slow motion. You could have your buddy get over your shoulder just like Aaron is right now. And you can watch your form in really slow motion, frame by frame, and make sure that your shooting form is on point. A couple things like making sure you're not just slapping the trigger, torquing the bow at the shot, following through properly. And you can pick that all apart real well with slow motion shots. So have your buddy pick up your iPhone or his iPhone and film you over the shoulder. You might learn something. I'm going to talk a little bit about why I shoot a single pin. I know it's not for everybody, but I've shot one ever since I got a compound bow and I really like it. First thing I like about it is that the pin is always in the center of the housing. It makes a lot of sense to me that I can just line my peep up around my housing and that pin's always in the center. And for my body type, I'm pretty long armed and I'm able to pull back decently high poundage and my arrow flight from 20 to 30 yards isn't much different. That's pretty much my maximum range. I'm not going to shoot further than that and if I do I'm definitely going to take the time, make sure the range is right and I'm going to have enough time to move that pin anyways in my opinion. This is the Pursuit from Trophy Ridge and it's really easy to use. Pretty much just your standard Allen, Allen wrench is going to get everything you need done. And once you get it sighted in left to right, all you need to do is get your slider. And I'm going to start marking, marking mine at, from 20 all the way to as far as I can get up here. I like that because I'm not limited to just five pins. I'm not going to shoot at 90 yards, but if I want to practice that far, I'm going to be able to do that. And the one last thing that I do like about this pin coming from the bottom here is in low light, you're able to take this bottom pin and just follow it straight up the animal's shoulder right, and line it up right behind the shoulder. That's my setup. It's pretty basic, but it's been working for me for quite a few years, so I don't really plan on changing it anytime soon. Well, everybody's been talking about their setups in this video, and well, here's mine. It's a stick, a string, and some arrows. I'm going to do a certain amount of hunting with traditional equipment this fall. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm real excited about it. And when I was shooting my compound at the shop the other day, I noticed that the uh, cable has stretched 
and some of the serving is coming off of it. I can see the timing was off on the bow, so I need to get that restrung. Uh, new cable for sure, probably just gonna get all new strings and cables. Hopefully I can get that done before we head to Nebraska. If I can't get it fixed, then I'm gonna go with a long bow. And starting out in western Nebraska, you know, that's gonna be a real challenging hunt with traditional equipment, given that I've never really hunted with it before. But it's a challenge that I wanted to undertake this fall, so why not just get started right away? If I can't get the Hoyt put back together, I'm gonna go with the long bow. So as far as getting into traditional bow hunting, uh, the, the bow itself, I chose to get a long bow just because that's just aesthetically, uh, that's what I like better. And in particular, this design is a reflex deflex design instead of a straight limb. This offers a little bit of advantage in performance, you know, maybe a few extra feet per second. It's a really smooth drawing bow. And this is a Martin Savannah Stealth. And one thing if you're getting into traditional bow hunting is to not over bow yourself, not to get too heavy a poundage. And this is a 45 pound bow at 28 inches and that's plenty to kill a deer. Uh, I'm not gonna be shooting past 15, 20 yards anyways. That's plenty of weight to kill deer at close range. You know, people have the tendency to think, well, I shoot a 70 pound compound, I'll get a 60 pound longbow or recurve. But there's a huge difference in obviously in the amount of weight that you can pull and hold comfortably. And achieving proper form, you know, proper back tension, consistent anchor point, and just getting consistent with shooting traditional equipment is much, much easier if you're shooting a lower draw weight, starting out at 40, 45, maybe 50 pounds. And uh, like I said, 45 pounds would be plenty to kill a deer. So that's where I'm at with this bow. Again, real quick, this is a Martin Savannah Stealth, pulling 45 pounds at 28 inches. Easton Legacy Aluminum Arrows, they're 1916. And I'm shooting Magnus Stinger, 150 grain broadhead two blade and uh, that's the setup so you know if you have any questions about getting into traditional bow hunting leave it in the comments below i've done a fair amount of research over the past few months and i found some really good resources uh, clay hayes comes to mind that's where i've done a lot of uh, learning as far as uh, traditional bow setups proper <laughs> <laughs> I think you got him. <laughs> That's incredible. Just smoked the deer target. That's awesome. He had one bum leg anyways. He's about to fall over. That's so anyways, if you have any any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, Clay Hayes, I've uh, he's got a YouTube channel. A lot of great information there. That's where I've uh, learned a lot about um, equipment setup and proper form. So I'm going to put the rest of the broadheads on, shoot those. So we're gonna be in Nebraska in a couple weeks. Real excited about that. I'll be filming Zach out there, doing some hunting myself. If I can't get my compound fixed, I'm just gonna be hunting with the, the stick bow. And a top goal of mine this year is to get a deer with traditional equipment. You know, any deer, whether it's a doe or a small buck. So you'll see me hunting with this bow quite a bit. I'm excited to have to use different tactics to get even closer to deer, to get within 15 yards to get one with traditional equipment. Well, we're wrapping things up for the day. The guys are sighted in. Got the broadheads ready to go. A little competition? Got a little competition left to do. <laughs> Is there anything on the line? Ice cream, Ted? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have a shootout with you. Loser buys ice cream. Loser buys <laughs> ice cream. Greg, Greg, Arnold Arnold Mall. You, Greg so. you're more than welcome to be a part of the competition. <laughs> if, you, if you believe in yourself, you're more than I'll welcome. I'll be the underdog. All right. So let's do 30 yards. You think you can shoot that far? <laughs> I'll arc one in there. <laughs> Farthest from the center of the, of the center bullseye in the middle of the target buys ice cream. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Fire that thing in there, Ted. What do you think, Ted? Oh, dang it. <laughs> I know how much he likes those, dang it. <laughs> What do you say? You give me three arrows? Let me empty my quiver? I'll give you three or two, Ted. Yeah, three. All right, we'll give him right. three. He's standing there at 30 yards, Greg. You can't let him get away. Can't wait for that wind to die down. All around it. Get these out of the way. Ted? Jake? Who buys ice cream? 
Greg buys ice cream. Okay. So what's the argument about even? <laughs> that's, all I'm, that's all I'm worried about. I just wanted to make sure I beat you, you little punk. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's already getting out of here. He's thinking about that ice cream. Getting his wallet ready. All right, well, we're wrapping up, guys. Ted's going to go get his ice cream. He's happier than a chipmunk. Does that make sense? He's happier than a chipmunk? Sure. Um, yeah. But thanks for watching. We'll see you at the dairy bar. What size do we're you need? We're at the dairy bar. What medium. Size? <laughs> a medium caramel malt. Well, you haven't had a caramel malt. You're not doing it right. I'll throw that on my floor. <laughs> you got us some caramel malts. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Greg.